Uh, so we head into May. This is a very exciting time for anyone who is trying to get into the hobby of astrophotography. And that is because a lot of the nebulae are starting to come back in our night sky. And this is a great time to get started on your first astrophotography setup. And I know that this hobby can get very expensive very quickly, but I think I can show you that, you know, as a beginner, you can start with the most basic of setup and half of that could be coming from your own inventory that you may already have in your household. And even with the most basic of setup, you can have a lot of fun and you can get really awesome images with just a simple setup. So let's get started. All right, let's start building your very first astrophotography setup. Now, before you go out there and buy everything that you need, I highly recommend that you spend a little time to take stock of what you currently own. Because believe it or not, there's a lot of stuff that you may already own that you can reuse and repurpose for astrophotography. And that will help with the cost of getting into the hobby. Uh, there are three main components to a setup. And the first component is you need to have a star tracker to keep track of the night sky. Number two, you need to have some sort of camera lens. Uh, number three, you need to have some sort of optics. Uh, those are the three main components and then the rest will be filled with, you know, random accessories that you may or may not like. So with the first component, uh, that's actually the most important and that would be your equatorial mount. In this case, this is a star tracker, basically a lightweight equatorial mount. This is a Skywatcher Star Adventurer Pro and I'm not going to spend too much time on this because there's not really much of a debate as to whether you need it or not. If you're doing long exposures, a star tracker is a requirement. So I'll even go on to say that you may as well just set aside four to five hundred dollars of your budget towards a mount uh, because if you want to do long exposure, you've got to get a star tracker to start with. All right, so now that I had the uh, I got the, the star tracker out of the way, we can talk about the next set of components. And this is actually where you can get creative, find alternatives. And this is where, you know, taking stock of your inventory pays off because believe it or not, uh, you can actually just use a normal DSLR to get into astrophotography. Uh, and you can actually just use normal camera lenses to get into astrophotography. Now, the only criteria that I personally will recommend is that you get a DSLR that has a flip screen. This is going to be extremely convenient for you because a lot of times your camera is going to be pointing up and you know, if your screen cannot rotate, your neck is going to be extremely sore by the end of the night. You can also look into a DSLR that has been astro modified. I have a video on that in my channel, but you know what? That's not a major requirement when you're starting out, but hey, if you come across a astro modified DSLR, that's a better choice than a bone stock DSLR because you can get uh, significantly more hydrogen alpha signal with a natural modified DSLR. Okay, now that we've got the camera sensor out of the way, let's talk about some optics. What I have here is a, I don't even know what this is, this is ex extremely old. This is an 80 to 200 millimeter kit lens. And when it comes to optics for astrophotography, I think the bare minimum that you need probably 100 millimeters in focal length because once you have that you can actually get close enough to image some of the larger uh, nebulae in the night sky now of course you won't be getting to you know the, the, the really tiny object in the night sky uh, you won't be doing any ga galaxies with these but you know if you already have kit lenses at home I really recommend that you just start with a regular kit lens uh, again, you know, if you have more than 100 millimeters in focal length, that is a great start. You can also use uh, shorter focal length, like this 
50 millimeters Canon's uh, Nifty 50. And you can use these to take sort of ultra wide field astrophotography shots where you can fit in like a giant region of the night sky. Um, I think with the 50 millimeters, you can easily fit anywhere from three to five objects if, you know, if they're positioned correctly in your frame. So with that being said, as you can see, it really doesn't take a whole lot to get into astrophotography. Do you need a camera lens? I mean, a camera sensor and then some optics. And as far as just getting into the hobby, I really recommend just getting a old or reuse your old uh, DSLR and then use whatever camera lenses that you already have. Uh, preferably something north of 100 millimeters in focal length. So before we go out and image uh, with our kit lens, <laughs> you may have noticed that I tend to have a lot of uh, masking tape around. And to be honest with you, I think masking tape is some of the best thing for astrophotography for many reasons. Um, if you follow me around, then you've probably seen me tape the interferometer to the leg of my tripod or taped the uh, green laser pointer to the dovetail of my William Optic Space Cat. Now, I'm using masking tape to tape down the focal length of my kit lens so that I know it's set to 200 uh, millimeters in focal length. And I've also taped down the focuser of the kit lens because unlike telescopes, these uh, kit lens or most zoom lens won't come with a focus lock. So using duct tape, I mean, not, not duct tape, definitely do not use duct tape. Using masking tape is a great way to sort of lock down your, uh, your focal length and your focus in a non-destructive way. And you can easily remove these tape without leaving any markings or residue. Um, and as you can see, I have also uh, masking taped the green laser pointer to the bottom of my uh, of my kit lens and um, You may be wondering why do I have my My video light mounted onto My camera and this is for balancing purposes for no for no other reason because uh, When you use a kit lens you won't have a way or unless you buy a separate collar for your lens, you don't have a way to mount your camera on with say like a dovetail where you can move it up or down to adjust for the, uh, the declination access balance. A lot of times you'll only be mounted it on, uh, on the camera body itself. And you know, with the lens, this is gonna be really front heavy. So I figure I'll just use my, uh, my video light uh, sort of you know to help balance this a little better um, it's not going to be perfect but you know we're not going for perfection um, uh, I just want to you know go out there and try to image with a kit lens and see what happens so yeah if you have some masking tape around and always remember use masking tape never use duct tape uh, this is going to help you a lot and these are like what five dollars a roll and they'll last you forever so if you got some masking tape on, make good use of it. Okay, so the plan tonight is to set my camera lens to the furthest that it will go, which is 200 millimeters in focal length. And the uh, f-stop is going to be at 5.6, basically as wide as it will go. And um, it's 11 o'clock right now. I think I've got at least another hour or two before Cygnus region clear the tree. And that's basically going to be my plan. I uh, don't really have a real target set in, set in sight because I don't know what's going to clear my tree uh, at this time of the year. But as soon as any part of Cygnus clears my tree, I'm going to start imaging. I'll be honest with you guys that uh, I have no idea what, what I'm going to get out of tonight. I don't usually image with a camera kit lens like this um, and I don't normally image um, or plan a session like this where 
I have no idea what's going to clear my tree and I just sort of take whatever I can at the earliest time. But you know, this is kind of exciting. Um, I, I get to share with you guys something that I don't even know what I'm going to get. Um, so this is kind of cool. Uh, I'm excited for how the night will turn out. I, I just wish that these clouds will, uh, will clear the area by the time uh, 1 a.m. hits my area. So wish me luck. Well, it's about 12 a.m just past midnight right now and that dot in the middle that you see that is supposed to be Vega and if that's Vega then Cygnus will be around here somewhere behind these trees so I'm hoping that within the next hour or so I begin I can begin imaging and also I hope that these clouds will go away because if they don't go away then uh, there goes my night <laughs> If this video looks disjointed to you, um, <laughs> that's because it is. I haven't been able to image for the last uh, three weeks or maybe even close to a month. And uh, by the time you're watching this, it's going to be June. So, you know, clouds, weather, and full moon just haven't, you know, been cooperative uh, for me to image. And I'll do my best to pick up where I left off um, and try to keep everything coherent. But for tonight's session, I'm going to try to be a little bit more specific. I mentioned earlier that I'm going to image. Thank you, bird. Um, I'm glad you agree. Uh, and in the last segment, I mentioned that I'm going to be imaging the Cygnus region. But uh, tonight, what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to use the star Seder as my reference and basically just center uh, my image around it and see what kind of hydrogen alpha signal that I'm able to pick up because there's a ton of signal. And, uh, and I hope that my kit lens will be able to pick that up. Um, if not, you guys will be the first to see it. And also one other thing, uh, this exercise was, uh, was actually really good for me because it led me to study my backyard and see where can I position my mount so that I can maximum amount of time. Uh, because as I mentioned that, you know, I got to deal with these trees and now with you know with the nighttime being so short i don't need to worry about you know cygnus region crossing over my roof because i'll never get there before it gets bright again so what i've done is i've parked my mount as close to my house as possible so this will give me my maximum amount of time as soon as cygnus clears a tree so um yeah when you guys have a chance study your location i think it'll be worthwhile all right, so it's past midnight and um, I'm starting to image the Seder region. Hopefully something good would come out of this, but I want to end the video by saying that, you know, this setup right here, um, it's really basic. You're using a lot of equipment that wasn't meant for astrophotography, but you know what? I think that's okay because I think this is the kind of setup that is really good for somebody who is trying to uh, just want to get into the hobby or you know somebody who isn't sure about the hobby but wants to try it out and without spending a whole lot of cash and obviously this is a great setup for somebody who is on a budget and finally I think this is a setup that is really good for somebody who is trying to learn to do more with less and there's a lot of value in that because once you learn how to do more with less, when you actually upgrade, you will understand what to upgrade, what to look out for. And I think as a beginner, uh, you shouldn't focus too much about the final image. This is not going to give you a great final image. But instead, I hope that when you're starting out the hobby, 
you should be focused on the experience of being underneath the night sky and exploring the night sky. Um, your final image will take care of itself. And with that, I hope that, you know, you found this helpful and, you know, the nebulas are coming back. So if you're a beginner or you're trying to get into the hobby, this is a great time to have your own, uh, your very, very first setup. And um, yeah, I hope that this was helpful. And with that, clear skies, everyone. <laughs>